Hi guys, uh, this is uh, Ron Santos. Uh, thank you for joining us here in this session. Uh, we're discussing the ins and out of uh, starting an innovation program within any organization and what are some of the challenges that we face. Um, I am a part of Already, and we help companies with this exact uh, issue and this exact problem and challenge. Uh, and I am joined today by Sandra Lam, and she is the author of the Entrepreneurship Formula. Uh, really happy to speak with you, Sandra, today and discuss this very relevant topic for a lot of organizations around the world. So welcome in. Hi. Thank you, Ron. Really glad to be here together with you to discuss entrepreneurship, corporate innovation. Um, I think, you know, it would be relevant for me to just do a brief introduction of my background. So I'm Sandra. I work for um, City Innovation Lab as an innovation catalyst. Uh, what it means, you know, what a fancy name, right? It means that, you know, we cultivate corporate entrepreneurship internally inside an organization. And my main job is basically turning employees into internal founders. So anyone who has any idea in the organization saying that I want to make the business better by building a new product, I would jump in and coach them design thinking, lean startup methodology, and help them to activate the part of them that have never been there, which is the entrepreneurial part of them. So um, right now, I think the biggest problem is 80% of the leaders say that they want innovation, but only 20% of them are quite satisfied. So that's why using my expertise and experience, I've written a book as a practical guide for leaders to then look into the elements, how do they build corporate um, innovation by engaging their employees by turning them into all of these, you know, innovators. Okay. Wow. That's amazing. And uh, yes, that's an issue that we really uh, see here already when we're discussing with companies. Um, I guess one, my first question would be, because this is a topic that I'm extremely interested in, um, is when you start an innovation uh, program and when you're trying to turn these employees into entrepreneurs, um, and to the, what we call already the, the C, really CEO of their own ideas. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you're facing and where, where do you start from zero? Well, um, starting from zero is actually quite tough because, um, you know, there are all sort of components. And, you know, when I looked into organization and worked with them, there are always like four buckets of things that I looked into. Number one is, do you already identify, you know, some of the people in your team that might be potential entrepreneurs. We're talking about the potential pipeline of people. Of course, you know, with the right training and skill set, we can convert them. But who is more eager to go? So this comes hand in hand, talent and skills. And on the other hand, you have culture and infrastructure. How do you build a culture that encourage people to step out of the comfort zone and think about ideas that they do not even maybe, you know, believe that it would happen today. How do you make sure that the culture allows people to be not afraid, to be not, you know, fearful about change? And there is always this, you know, big um, fear culture in corporation because people want to do the right thing. At, at the same time, you know, innovation is all about things that you haven't tried before. So how can the employees step out and say, hey, you know, let me try something. Let me experiment and become an entrepreneur myself in your organization. And the last thing is, you know, the, the complementary infrastructure. You can encourage people all the way, you know, be very um, open about talking about innovation. But do you have the right infrastructure to actually support the development of the solution? Do you have a sandbox, for example, like, so that people can actually experiment the solution without failing in the production environment. So these are all the important elements that we highlight and also, you know, I talk about in my book to help the leaders to do it step by step, you know, learn the gaps in your organization right now, what you already have, what you don't have, and build a bridge together. And I have to tell the leaders, like, there's one thing that you have. That's the beauty of this thing. There's one thing that you already have which is the employee workforce that you already have, the amazing workforce right. that can be trained and can be guided to what's becoming entrepreneurs. Perfect. Yes. Uh, so I think that's really important. Uh, that's a topic that everyone needs to understand is that employees, and uh, what we say here already as well, and um, um, 
employees are really the driving force behind these ideas. Uh, so you, you have that starting point, which is employees, but it is really difficult to get started. Uh, and there is a, ch a lot of challenges that you face along the way. Uh, so one of the things also that, that, that we, uh, that we really stress is that, uh, you need a team behind you. Um, and you, you really need a, a setup and a program and give this free space, right? Uh, because you can't put hurdles on innovation, especially at the beginning of a program. Um, so when we are, when we're talking about starting, if you have a lot of ideas already, um, how do you get those ideas in and how do you execute on these ideas? Uh, that's really a, a, a big question, right? Because uh, there is going to be a lot of ideas within an organization, but how do you execute on those ideas? Uh, so my question for you is when you were working, uh, when you're working at City, um, how are you guys working on idea execution? Because that's, that's really a big topic, right? Thank you, Ron. This is such an important question. Moving ideas, not just moving, maybe, you know, at the beginning of it, when you start to receive ideas and then later on, you know, how do you prioritize them? How do you know that they are actually important uh, problem to solve for your organization? How do you know um, that, that solving that problem will get you X times of revenue or even, you know, increase the gross margin? Innovation is not about just having fun because it has an end game. It has this very specific goal. Yes, it might fail, but we hope that, you know, out of the portfolio of the ideas that we have, we do achieve a certain X amount of, you know, increase in the KPI, right? There is always a measurable metric in terms of innovation too. So then, you know, working on the funnel becomes very important um, in terms of, you know, you have the large pool of ideas. How do you help to validate which one is valid to you and which one has a commercial value and which one can be executed and eventually flowing into the pipeline of being a live launch product into the hands of the clients? So that infrastructure, I call it an idea management tool and an idea management funnel. So these are two different things. So idea management tool means that how do you capture the ideas? How do you, you know, use, let's say, you know, boot camps or hackathons to activate your people thinking, these are the problem set of my organization. How do we solve this? Once you have the ideas in, how do you then push it through the pipeline becomes the funnel. So I would say, you know, most of the corporate, um, uh, innovation team would have some sort of similar model as well, which is a more stage gated methodology. So in terms of pushing the idea forward, they always build different gates and say, hey, have you validated in the first place whether your idea actually have demand? And then the team would have to, you know, fulfill some of the criteria and do some market research. And the next step they do is to understand um, whether, you know, the ideas is actually feasible technologically, like, you know, can I actually build this? Well, are we talking about time travel? Are we talking about, you know, a, a technology that we can actually apply today? And then the third thing is, you know, how do we then extract value out from it? Like, yes, it's a cool product, but who is going to pay for that? For, for every single stage, there are structured experiment that you can actually do so this is more like you know stimulating what the startup do but in a corporate environment and you have all these amazing resources inside your organization especially your client base who can feed back to you at every single stage whether they like the product or not so in terms of that process it's already very mature and developed it's just that you know how the leaders cascade it down how do they train the people and build the organization to be more compatible in terms of these experimental environments. Perfect. That sounds great. And that's actually something that uh, we see a lot and we try to help with within companies. Uh, so one example, um, just for example, we also, at the beginning of already, we started an innovation program at Swisscom and that's, that's our background. That's where we come from. And Swisscom being the largest telecom in Switzerland. Uh, and we were seeing as within this large organization, obviously there was a lot of ideas uh, popping up from anywhere in the organization. So how do we execute in the, in, on these ideas? That was a big question. Uh, and that's why we, we were able to implement this kickbox program and a kickbox methodology, which we now help implement within other companies. Uh, and an example being that companies usually 
uh, or, or traditionally what they wanted to do is really focus when they have an idea, okay, um, some, an idea comes in, let's try to really understand it. Um, let's try to get all of this organizational setup uh, behind it and spend a lot of time on organizational setup rather than figuring out, is there a product market fit? Um, do clients actually have a need for, uh, for this idea? So one, one of the things that we focus on, like you said about this funnel and this process, it's at the very beginning stages is put as least hurdles as possible to really, really try to fill this funnel uh, and have people encouraged within an organization to fill up uh, and to bring in ideas, um, encourage them to be entrepreneurs, right? And at the beginning stages during this validation phase, we have also, we have also a, a, a three-step process. Uh, and that beginning state, uh, process or validation phase, we try to give employees two months uh, two to three months to work on an idea on 20%. So it'll take one day a week uh, for, for about two months to work on their idea with a small budget of around a thousand dollars, euros, etc. cetera. Um, and they're trying to figure out, okay, I'm going out asking questions. Uh, is there a need for my idea rather than focusing at this point on organizational setup? Uh, because we want them to go out and ask questions and fail on those ideas as much as possible. That's going to really fill up the funnel. And then we focus, okay, on a prototype. Is, is there... Uh, now that I have validated this idea, can I find hypotheses to, uh, to, or, or have about four to th three to four hypotheses on how to fix this problem, uh, this problem? And then, uh, we implement this. Then we can think a little more about organizational setup, uh, and who's going to do what once we have a team, once we have a product market fit, uh, and so on. But we really try to, um, open up this program to everyone, uh, so that ideas are coming in as much as possible. That way we have, we call it gold box or implementation at the end um, as much as possible later down the road. Um, so I, I, I think uh, there's many ways to do this, but really important to have a team and a structure behind it uh, to create this sort of um, manageable freedom, right? Uh, and have visibility on, on, on ideas and, um, and an innovation within the company. Uh, so my next question to you, Sandra, is how important is top management support? Um, in, in this process? How important is it to convince um, all, all the, um, uh, the, the all the people at the top that innovation is so important uh, for the future and why is it so important? What are some of the things that you're telling uh, top management to, to encourage them to put time and resources into innovation? Super important. <laughs> I can't really stress, um, you know, enough. Um, it's super important to have top management support. But I think, you know, the, the question of rather focus on why. So why do you need to know if you're a leader today? Why do you need to know this is so important for your organization? This is not fun event. This is not some, you know, kind of like um, just em employee engagement um, events to do. Because I see a lot of these examples. Like people say, Hey, let's come together for a boot camp and we have fun, a hackathon. We were, you know, all very happy and, and kind of like excited about the idea. But after some time, nothing happens and we go back to the old state. So I will have to stress that entrepreneurship is not about the boot camp. It's not about just the hackathon that you do for like three days. So what is important? It's number one, most of the industries are facing disruption. Like, we look at the fault list, like half of the companies might not even be there 10 years from now. The switching of the companies on the fault list are so drastic for the last 10 years too. So this is the experience that we have looking at the list. And also, you know, in terms of the technology acceleration, it has been very fast paced for the last couple of years, especially after COVID. So the lift brought into like digital and also, you know, um, the technological change, the, also the consumer behavior, they changed so much that if you think that the business model that you're going after today can help you survive the next 10, 20 years without challenge of your any margins or your revenue, I think you have to look harder. I think, you know, maybe it's time to looked into not just your competitors because there are all sort of startups trying to look into your market as well. So beware of unexpected competition and you need to keep innovating every single day and you can't do it on your own. You can't do it just relying on 
your management team, your, your senior management team, you can't do it just relying on your R&D center. You have to engage the mass majority of your employees, hoping that with 100 ideas, you can come to maybe you know five that are valuable at the end of the day. And the investment return does not come overnight. I have to stress that. Innovation, it's a process that usually it takes around three years to get the return that you want. So if you don't do it now, you will be late. So that's one thing. On the other hand, there's also a big massive shift of employee behaviors too. Like you have maybe, you know, 20 years ago, people stay in the company for 20 years. They are very happy there. They want the stability. They want the benefits. They are very loyal to companies. This is not today. People, employees, talents seek for challenge. They want fulfillment. The, the, the more, you know, challenging projects that they do, they feel that they're more valued and more contented in the organization. So help them to find the challenge. Um, there are channels that you can build this pipeline of wonderful entrepreneurs inside your organization. And the challenging projects and solving problems are the way to retain them. So from the front of the innovation impact in terms of the money dollar terms for your organization and staying competitive in the industry, Two, the getting the employees being retained and getting the best talents within your organization. So these are the reasons that you really have to, as a leader, you really have to engage into innovation conversation and see how you can get started. I'm so glad that you're saying that because it, it is crucial and that's something that, that we really stress uh, and that's getting the work for, workforce involved. And and the reason is and, and why, why we have, why we, have seen within companies is that these are the people who are close to the product. These are the people who are close to the clients. Uh, the employees within a company, they, they really have the connection to the product, uh, the, connect, the connection within the company to really understand uh, what's needed. And they're the ones that are going to burst, burst out ideas within the company, uh, ideas that then we can then build. Um, and these are the ideas that are going to save our company in the future. So entrepreneurship is super important. Uh, and, I, I highly believe that it has to be valued within the company. It has to be pushed by top management. So they're the ones that give us the support. Uh, how important is it to have visibility uh, within within your program? Did, is that an uh, issue that you run into a, a, a city? And how were you dealing with creating visibility for the whole company uh, and creating visibility for these employees to know that they have the opportunity to submit an idea and then to work on those ideas. How did you go about solving that issue? Oh, thank you for asking this question. Like in a 200,000 employee organization, you can imagine, you know, communications uh, can be in all shape and form and, you know, you do one campaign, it would never be enough. Like the, the visibility has to be, again, top down. So we started from the... Um, the, the senior management and we also have all sort of digital tools that help us to cascade the message so one important thing is that you know for large organization especially there will be a lot of silos it's just you know how organizations are, are built you know and shaped into after a long time and especially for you know companies who have like you know more than 50 years of a uh, kind of you know um, lifetime already so beware that you will be falling into like communication fragments that one department may know about this program, the other might not. So digital tools and senior management support can help you in that sense. So for example, in my organization city, we have a one channel that anybody, it's more like a shell box, like anybody who, who has an idea to come to that um, particular platform, it's an online platform internally, they can submit the problem that they're working on. And they can also see the problem that other people are working on. And they can also see, you know, what problem set did the management actually publish? And then they can actually fill in what idea they have and describe, you know, oh, this idea falls under which product line. And 
using AI, they can actually match, you know, are there people working on similar idea or similar problems? Can we join a force? We can ping the other person and say, hey, I'm working on similar stuff. Can we team up together? Or, you know, I'm working on this. I'm just starting. What's your insight? What's your previous research? So these are the way to actually help people to connect. And, and innovation is all about connecting the dots, isn't it? So helping your people connect is actually a big factor in innovation inside your organization. And, you know, I talk a lot about training the entrepreneurship. On the other hand, giving them the network. It's also important because your staff, you know, sitting in their silo, they might not actually know that somebody has already done something on that particular problem. And trust me, inside my organization city, whatever you talk about, somebody has already done something about it. So there are always a lot of information around. It's just that how as a leader, you can help people to connect and find out those gaps themselves. Amazing. Um, yeah, that's that's really important. I, I, I highly believe that visibility is such a part of the solution, right? And showing that we are invested in innovation, showing that we are working in innovation, and then also creating uh, that community uh, within the company of, of ideators, but also of people who just want to help, uh, who want to get involved in ideas. Because just because um, maybe you don't have an idea yourself, doesn't mean that you don't have some talent and that you don't have some knowledge that could potentially help someone within your company um, to build on their idea. And, and that goes into breaking those silos, right? Um, and I think a platform is highly necessary for this, not only for visibility, but also within a large organization like City or, or others who are above 10,000, 100,000. Uh, it's all about scalability, right? And how do we fill up that funnel? Uh, we need a platform to do that. Um, so my next question would be, when it comes into scalability, uh, how important is it to have low barriers uh, in order to fill up that funnel? Uh, is that a, a problem that you see a lot? Uh, and, and how do you deal with this, uh, with this issue? Very good question, Ron. And it really depends on your own organization setting. So because scalability is very, very important in my previous organization city, Whenever you look at a solution in a big organization with multiple markets involved, the commercial value of launching in a single market becomes very low. So that's why scalability is important for especially large organizations. If you're small, any incremental change would be good enough, maybe. But for you know medium size and large corporations, what they are looking at is what is the scalable solution that I can launch tomorrow that apply to my multiple markets in multiple regions that can get me the 10 times effect. But of course, not every idea is, you know, 10 times of the effect. Some might be, you know, along the spectrum. But basically what it means is that scalability is the main factor that we even consider right at the start, at the funnel. So when we talk about prioritizing ideas, these are the things that we talk about. So when you look into the problem set, then you have the ideas. The, the first thing that we do to prioritize it to, is to see whether it fits into our set of criteria of the, the, the selection. So scalability is sitting on that list. And there are, so don't make it very complicated. I would say, you know, on, on, you know, my list in my previous organization, we have only like around six, six criteria, and scalability is one of them. And if that, you know, test is not passed, we would not even consider that idea until it make a point to, you know, validate itself that it could be scalable. I see. Uh, so it's all about really validating on those ideas, right? When we're talking scalability, that's something that, that we see a lot as well. And, Within uh, Swisscom, when we started uh, the program, one of the ideas that, that came in, actually, just to give an example, uh, was someone who wanted to create a tracker um, for their laundry uh, within their, their building so that they would know when the laundry was done. Uh, obviously, this was a hardware uh, a solution, and Swisscom, folks, being a telecom, focused on software solution. So within a normal organization, this would be turned down. Uh, but with the kickbox methodology, they were able to 
uh, submit this idea and then play around with it. And what came out of it after the validation phase and through the piloting phase is that uh, solution wasn't really necessary uh, because actually people get time with their iPhone. Uh, but the, uh, the actual hardware piece turned into an office space management tool uh, that is now used by many companies and this spun out as a startup. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say with this is that we need to keep these, um, this first stage of validation open uh, because this is where we're going to see some ideas that come in as something, but then they develop into something completely different, right? Uh, and, and that's totally. about giving the employees freedom uh, or a controlled environment freedom to, to develop these ideas. Uh, and then we can really scale on them if there is a product market fit, right? Uh, that we find. I really like the point. Really yeah. like the point, Ron. And you touch a point, something that is really important is to allow flexibility during the innovation phase. So we often actually see that team pivot. Team comes in with a, you know, a big idea that they want to do, and they think that that's the way to actually solve the problem. And most of the time, these are like obvious solutions. You know, you look at the problem, this is the way how you solve it. But we often see that the teams that done really well at the end of the day are the teams that who pivot and pivot and pivot, meaning they can come out of the funnel with an entirely different idea. It still solves the problem and it might even solve the problem in a better way than day one that they enter the funnel. So this is you know, giving the flexibility of an employee to switch to be more, even more creative than they just enter you know, the, the program. Yes, that's uh, flexibility and, and pivoting is really important when we're talking about innovation, right? Uh, and that's the way, like you said at the beginning, that startups are doing this, right? And what we want to create is that culture of a, or startup culture within the company so that we can be flexible. Otherwise, within this large organizations that have been around for a while, you're right, they're, they're facing the problem that they will uh, die off if they're not pivoting, if they're not flexible themselves. And how do you stay flexible? is by educating your workforce for the future. Uh, so we want to create this culture of, of, of failure so that we can find the right solutions. Okay, so I, I see that we have about three and, a, three and a half minutes left or so. So I, I want to end it up with uh, hearing a word from you on what is the most important thing that you found while writing the entrepreneurship formula? Um, and what is the one word you want to leave uh, our innovation leaders with today who are visiting us during this talk? Um, one, one last word of advice as we uh, leave this conversation. Thank you. So I would say, you know, the, the most important thing is to start today. Start today. Start talking with your senior management folks, you know, what innovation means to us. How do we want to engage our employees? Just start today to understand where you stand, where the gaps are, and how do you go from here to there? So look at, you know, how is the entrepreneurship ground today. I, in my book, I have assessment tools that can help people to understand where you are at just today and what kind of you know, things that you're lacking. So try to understand that, start from there. On the other hand, I would say the one thing that you can start now, you know, instead of like, um, going like mass scale or you know, going out and shout out and build a big program, is to understand the problems inside your organization. Problems could be like, you know, oh, there is a new way of um, doing things outside in the competitors. What are they, you know, trying to do? Or there is new trends in your market of your customers. What does it mean for us? So these are the problem set that you can already craft and say, how do we want them to be solved if, you know, we were going to approach this? But you don't have to give all the answer of the solution. If you can share with them, you know, with the employees, your problem set, that already activate part of them thinking, how do I, as an employee, help the organization solve some of these? Perfect. Thank you so much, Sandra. Um, okay, so I, I think with that, we should uh, uh, end this conversation. And I'm, I'm really excited to... Um, see what the future holds uh, for the innovation world for entrepreneurs. And I really hope that you guys uh, in this talk can, can take this and implement it in your organization and really build an entrepreneurship culture. Thank you so much, Sandra. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day.